Let's say I give you a drug, an antibiotic, and you develop a rash. Well, that could be coincidence. But let's say I gave you that same antibiotic maybe two years later, and you develop exactly the same rash, or a worse rash, or a much worse reaction. That's not coincidence. As Sir Arthur Conan Doyle said, once coincidence, twice never. And this phenomenon is called challenge-rechallenge, and it's extremely important in pharmacovigilance, in drug safety monitoring. So the terms we want to deal with are challenge-rechallenge, and it refers to a situation where re-exposure of an individual to an agent such as a drug or vaccine elicits a similar adverse reaction to that which was seen following the initial exposure. The secondary reaction associated with the rechallenge may either produce the features associated with the primary challenge, or it may lead to a worsening of the condition that was provoked or induced by the initial exposure. Alternatively, the risk of an adverse outcome may increase with repeated exposures, possibly because the immune system has been put on alert by previous exposures. And I want to deal with that immune system aspect of this in reference to what we've already learned. Let's take the immune system following the initial exposure. The way the immune system works in humans is to see something for the first time and become primed to be ready to anticipate to see that same thing again, and when it does, to deal with it in a bigger, bolder, faster way. And this is often protective against exposures, but if you have an adverse reaction to, say, a vaccine, then that may make it worse. That may produce a bigger, worse, bolder secondary exposure, a, a greater adverse reaction, a worse rash, for example. So, in terms of pharmacovigilance, in terms of drug and vaccine safety, the importance of rechallenge has been characterized by the Institute of Medicine in their proceedings, where judgment favoring acceptance of a causal relationship has been based solely on one or more convincing case reports. For example, Coulter and Fisher reported one case of hemolytic anemia in a two-year-old boy that occurred six days after his fourth dose of DPT vaccine. The boy returned to health until six days after his fifth DPT vaccine when he was hospitalized with the identical symptoms that accompanied his initial reaction, including this time loss of consciousness. In other words, a worsening of that initial reaction. Causation was accepted on one convincing story of challenge rechallenge. And in April 2001, the same committee the IOM stated that in the context of MMR vaccine, as a possible cause of autism, challenge, rechallenge would constitute strong evidence of causation. Now, I presented that meeting subsequently with evidence of challenge, rechallenge. It never saw the light of day. But during our clinical investigations in the United Kingdom at the Royal Free Hospital between 1995 and 2000, we observed that some children who'd received a second dose of MMR or boosting with the combined measles rubella vaccine experienced either onset of further deterioration in their physical and or behavioral symptoms following vaccination or in the initiation of these symptoms following that second exposure. So let's look at MMR and autism in that study. Our hypothesis was that for children with lightly MMR induced regressive autism and intestinal disease, those who got an MMR booster may exhibit more severe symptoms and more severe intestinal disease than those ch children who received only one dose. As a comparison group, we took a similar once exposed group. They weren't rechallenged. They were necessary to exclude the possibility that secondary regression was just something that happened in children with autism without the need for a further trigger. With respect to the bowel disease, the comparison group helped to rule out the possibility that disease severity just varied from child to child in a random way, regardless of whether they'd received one vaccine or two. So we had 23 children with normal early development and autistic regression who had received more than one dose of an MMR or MR vaccine, the re-exposed group 
and these were compared with 23 children with normal early development and autistic regression who'd received only one MMR or MR, the once exposed group. Each re-exposed child was matched by age, sex and time elapsed from the first exposure, the first MMR, to their objective investigation by endoscopy of the intestine, of biopsy and microscopic analysis. Exposure groups were compared on their histories of development and behavior, gastrointestinal or GI related physical symptoms, scores of endoscopic and microscopic disease severity that were judged by a pathologist who had no knowledge of the children's vaccination status, whether they'd had one or two doses of the vaccine. I just want to show you some examples of the data that came from that challenge rechallenge study. On my right hand side, you see the once exposed group and you see these children with secondary incontinence. The importance of this is that you have children who have developed urinary and fecal continence. They are, they're potty trained. And yet with the regression associated with vaccination, we heard in many that they became incontinent. That is a loss of a major acquired skill. In the once exposed children, we saw no secondary incontinence. In those who were rechallenged, after the rechallenge, then 30% of them developed secondary urinary and or fecal incontinence, a major symptom. Here we see the percentage with onset or deterioration in their physical symptoms following the booster vaccine or equivalent, and this could be any number of physical symptoms, severe weight loss, for example, wasting, failure to thrive. Again, on my right, the once exposed group, uh, very few, 4% of children were affected by deterior, spontaneous deterioration in their physical symptoms. But what we saw in the re-exposed group was a massive 70% of the children following the re-exposure developed secondary deterioration in their physical symptoms. When we looked under the microscope and judged those with acute inflammation, irrespective of a knowledge of whether they'd been vaccinated with one or two doses, then we saw acute inflammation, that's pus, that is more severe disease, if you look down the microscope and look at the biopsies from children who've only been exposed once, then only 13% of them have this acute inflammation. However, if you look at the children who've been re-exposed after their second dose, then some 57% of them have got acute inflammation. In other words, there is much worse disease in those children who've received two doses than one. If we look at the grades of acute inflammation, so not just whether it's there or not, but is it mild, moderate, or severe? We see exactly the same pattern. Grade one, mild disease, 67% in those exposed once, but only 30% in those exposed twice, with 62% developing more severe disease. So in conclusion, developmentally typical children who regressed after a single MMR vaccine suffered further regression and deterioration in their physical symptoms and intestinal disease after a booster dose of MMR vaccine. And this is evidence, according to the Institute of Medicine, according to the courts of law in this country, evidence of causation.